Well, it just feels good to be back live on Dev Central Connects here on Thursday at our regularly scheduled time. I know some of you uh, may have had a chance to join some of our uh, you know, previous vulnerability uh, live stream events that we've had here on Dev Central. Uh, but this is our regularly scheduled program where we, uh, where we get to connect with you, the community, and uh, just enjoy that engagement and that connection. Uh, my name is John Wagnon, and I'm joined by the uh, the man himself, Mr. Jason Rom. So, Jason, it's good to be back, man. What it is? How, how yeah. you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's Thursday, and it's uh, we're like right back in the in the right seat. And yep, feels good. Yeah, that's right, man. Well, hey, we are uh, as as we always do on Dev Central Connects. We are streaming live on YouTube and LinkedIn and uh, Periscope. So uh, come on with us and you know, uh, comment and we will comment back to you. So here's a couple of them. Uh, Daniel Pacheco, I, th I think maybe you, you said that just a second ago. The music is much better than what you were previously using. I'm watching a live stream, not going into battle. Daniel, I would say yes, but I would also say no. We are always going into battle. We're going into battle for the community, for the wellness of, uh, of our great community. So that's awesome, man. No, but hey, a shout out to our, uh, our studio team at F5 who helped us with some of those transition uh, you know, videos and music and all that kind of stuff. So it's awesome stuff. So yeah, who's the band, man? man who, I'll have to look that up for you. Yeah, I don't I know. Don't we could know. we could share that part. That's a great question, <laughs> Jeff. That's if you're question. watching, Jeff, Jeff put that together for us uh, from the creative team. Yep. If, if you're watching, uh, may, maybe you know the the title. Uh, I was just looking through a list of stuff he picked out, and it's like, yes, that one. That's got to be it, man. So, That's our new intro music. So it's uh, it's great stuff. Yep. Great stuff. Well, um, and say, yeah, hey, and then, somebody enjoyed the new countdown messages. Oh, the text within the message is good. That, yeah. That, yeah. The countdown messages. Also it's a the Jeff two, special. The Jeff. Yeah. He really, he really went that extra mile for us. You know, the two minute warning, the, you know, it's get ready to go. We're coming on soon. And Mustafa, hey, all of us are feeling good. All of us are feeling good. That's awesome. It's awesome. Well, good stuff, man. Well, hey, um, one thing that I wanted to mention um, before we kind of get the show going is uh, sometimes Jason will have a little back and forth on, you know, is it crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Uh -oh. Is it, is it <laughs> which, which there is a definite right answer on that. If, if anyone has seen that episode, if not, go back and look and you'll find that crunchy is the answer. Um, but hey, today I thought about here we are in the midst of summertime and summertime is my favorite uh my favorite season of the year. I wondered what yours was. What's your favorite season of the year? This might actually be the first thing we've agreed on. <laughs> Summer it is. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm getting old and I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not really old, but I'm already feeling that need to, to move to Florida and have the 4 right. p.m. lunches so I could go to bed at 7 p.m. And yeah, I'm so low. heat heat all the way. Yep. Okay. So yeah, bedtime at 6 and you wake up at a, at a crisp little 3 a.m. or something crazy like that. Good to go. All right. Well, hey, there's Jeff, man. Song is Echo by Mark Mike Arnold. Arno? Ar 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 Arno? Arno? Or how about our uh, yes my for is Echo? Not strong. How about <laughs> yes for the Echo song? No, it's good stuff, man. Thanks for sharing that, Jeff. Um, yeah, so the music is is awesome. Well, hey, we have an amazing uh show lined up for today. Um, as we get into this, I just wanted to mention uh something about the power of community. And as most, if not all of you know, that are watching this, uh, there's a vulnerability that uh, that was recently recently released on the Big IP family of products, and we've done a lot of different shows on that. We've talked we've talked a lot about it to try to help everyone through that. But one of the beautiful things about that is the is the power of community. And when a crisis hits, then we take this global community, this this community that spans across you know the entire world. And we can harness the power of that. Uh, so we have we have a couple of uh, just amazing experts on with us today. Um, one of, is a is an F five employee. One is not, and and so we're able to take the expertise from within F five, but beyond F five, and say, hey, we're going to gather this and we're going to present it to you, the world, the the F five Dev Central community, and um, and help everyone. And so that's. Uh, that's the that's that's one of the beauties and one of the one of the powerful aspects of community. So, yeah, and in fact, we're we're going to cover two automation techniques today mm -hmm. for you know taking what we had in the uh, the mitigations 
uh, and and the, the vulnerabilities and being able to then upgrade or update your big IP, depending on, you know, if you're just doing a, a point update or you're going to do a major upgrade, uh, you know, the, the process works the same. And so we're, we're going to look at that at two avenues, one through Ansible and one through big IQ. Yep. And so we're going to kick this off with Ansible. And so let's, uh, let's, let's get there. Well, everyone, we have the pleasure today of welcoming Mr. Sebastian Maniac. So, Sebastian, thank you for joining us here on uh, DevCentral Connects. It is awesome to have you, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's yeah. great to be on. I've oh, watched awesome. many different episodes. So, Yeah, no, that's, that's great, man. That's great. Hey, I tell you what, when we were doing one of our live streams, I think this was last week, uh, we were talking with the panel of like F5 mm -hmm. you know, experts and all that. And people were talking about, hey, you've got to update your software and get on the get on the, the fixed version. Right. So there's different protections that you can take uh, maybe while you're waiting to update. But ultimately, you need to update your software. And then while we were doing that, Sebastian, you were out there like rocking and rolling in the comments yeah. and said, hey, I've got like I don't even know dozens of big Many. IPs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you needed to update. And you 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 reached into the power of automation through Ansible and you updated these things. And so we were like, man, we got to talk to Sebastian, you know, we got to hear all about this stuff. And so apparently we're not the only ones because you got a fan club out here already. I mean, you haven't really said uh, anything. I, I do know some people on this fan club. Uh, yeah. I, met, I met Daniel actually at the F5 Agility in 2016, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, M. M. Saeed, yeah. Sebastian mm -hmm. Manning is legit, <laughs> legit. Hey, man, if you're if you're legit in M. Saeed, oh, I appreciate mind, that. You're legit in everybody's mind. So yeah, yeah, awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, yeah, awesome. definitely. Uh, um, you guys were uh, streaming last week, and uh, I decided to chime in. Hey, I'm upgrading. I was actually de upgrading devices as I was going, and <laughs> so my role as a let's say F5 consultant or subject matter expert, I've been doing F5 um, consulting on my own through many different VARs for about uh, maybe 10 years now. Um, so I always like to automate as, my, as many things as I can uh, to make things quicker and so I don't have to repeat the process. Um, cool. So I, I definitely always prefer to use Terraform if I have to these days because I'm trying to kind of advocate more infrastructure as code. Um, okay. But for some customers, it's harder to um, to do that, maybe they don't have that Terraform infrastructure. They they don't give me access um, to an Ansible box. Um, maybe I have a Windows server that's restricted, so I have to kind of always, as a consultant, find different ways to get the job done quicker, but make sure it kind of follows the best practices. Yeah. Um, so, in there was a case where I had a customer. We had about thirty F fives in AWS, and uh, they are in the process of deploying a big IQ. But we have to do this right now because we have a change window and we have to get it done, all right? So I quickly uh, spun up uh, Ansible inside of AWS, um, which was good for the team because they allowed me to do that. Um, <laughs> simply uploaded the big, I, uh, the big IP uh, OS uh, onto the device. So it's quicker to upload to the devices because the biggest time to upgrade the F5 is uploading a two gig mm -hmm. file and rebooting a two gig file. Um, and then I took uh, kind of a list uh, of all the modules that I saw on Ansible. And I built an Ansible script uh, to help upload the files to every single device, uh, install the files, actually save the configuration first, uh, install the files, verify the upload uh, was completed. And at the end, the biggest part at the end was um, booting into the new partition. So if some customers wanted to go from 14 to 15 um, uh, to a newer code, it's kind of copying that config. I don't want to log into the CLI. So I actually just did uh, inside of Ansible, and I'll show you guys, I did um, a curl command to actually execute that uh, that file. Yeah, uh, I love it. Yeah, cool. no, it's great. Um, so okay. I, we can demo yeah, this you out. Want, you want to get into the demo? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. All right. um, so here, here's a quick playbook. You can grab this off of GitHub, um, and we can kind of take a look at it. Um, so it's just an example, but really what I did uh, for a couple customers, and I already sent this to maybe a dozen customers this week, um, where they can list out all their F5s. Um, so in this case, we're just using AWS just to spin stuff up. Um, 
I quickly kind of put the username and password, kind of quickly spun it up. Mm -hmm. um, and then I built uh, this 55 line uh, simple kind of playbook. Uh, first playbook, we just provide, we're just the provider. So getting a list of all those hosts. Um, first task, we save the configuration just in case it wasn't saved. Um, really what I want to do later on is maybe add a backup in here so it backs it up externally. Yeah. Um, all right. Next, we're just going to upload the image. So in this demo, up, I'm uploading uh, big IP 16.0 because it just came out. And I thought I'd try it in this lab and try it at my home lab. Yeah. Uh, the, the next option uh, or the next setup is to actually install the big I, the OS into the new partition. Mm -hmm. um, we have two ways of doing this. Um, based on the state, if I select install, I'll just install the operating system into that partition, but I won't boot into it. If you change this to active, it will actually automatically boot into the device. Um, the problem with that is that if you haven't copied that config from the first partition to the second partition and you boot to that new one, you're going to lose all your configurations. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was after it's installed, I just want to make sure, hey, everything was installed, was verified. Mm -hmm. um, give me the actual spit out the software, um, system software. Um, and split up the results inside this uh, this playbook. And I added this uh, a couple of days ago because I wanted the whole process to be uh, seamless. Um, so this raw curl script actually, uh, all it does is logs into the GUI of, or log or does a curl or REST API call into the device and sends this command um, right uh, to the device to copy the source from hard drive 1.1 to 1.2. Mm -hmm. um, there is a command in the module to do this, but uh, unfortunately the to do a bash um, configuration has been kind of depreciated. So it, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so that's pretty quick, uh, pretty quick and simple. And we can kind of run through this. Uh, so for my lap, for my example here, I have two F5s and I just spun up an AWS. We can see that we have one partition. Um, and the big thing when deploying the F5 in AWS, always deploy a dual partition. Um, I've had a customer early this week that they only deployed a single um, uh, partition deployment in AWS. And uh, unfortunately, they, uh, they had to go about redo a lot of their applications because they weren't using AS3. Mm -hmm. um, but so we have our two partitions, so let's run the script. Um, simply, I'm just gonna run the playbook, select my inventory and install the OS. Oh, wrong one, install OS. So let me just make this bigger. Um, first thing I'm doing, just like we had in the task, we're saving the configurations. I've already uploaded the, the file just to save time. So yeah. it already passed that. Uh, next, it's uh, installing the operating system. So if we go back in here, uh, it fails at first, but just give it a second, it'll start actually going. Mm -hmm. um, really, that it's. I think it's something new in the GUI itself that it kind of fails and then it finally uh, starts spinning up. Okay. Um, so, so it's just going through testing right now. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing I did find if, if I'm going from version 14.1, to 15 and I have the ILX module, I ran into a bug uh, that I had to just remount the user to it. Um, I can share that on my uh, GitHub to the team itself. So there we go. It kicked in, it's installing the operating system onto the drive. Nice. And once this install is done, it's just gonna spit out to me that yes, it was installed. And then it's gonna copy the uh, configuration from hard drive one to hard drive two and I'm gonna reboot. Um, in a production environment, if we have an active standby deployment, um, maybe we don't wanna reboot the device, uh, or maybe we can select uh, different types of host files. We can have active load balancers and standby load balancers. So then we could do all the standby ones first, reboot them, fail the traffic over, make sure everything is working fine, and then do the active, uh, or which would, would be the, the, the first, uh, standby devices. So, and you establish all that in your playbook, correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So Beautiful. for the while this is going for the yeah. for the uninitiated with Ansible, 
Uh, can you kind of describe the process of a playbook? Like, you know, other than just, you know, task, 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 but you know, how, how would, how would one just get started with, uh, with a solution like this? Cause it's 55 lines and you're done and people look at that. Wow. That's pretty impressive. But yeah, you know, those are 55 lines that they didn't, they don't really know how to get to. That's, that's true. And, and to be honest, the best resource, um, is this cloud docs. Um, I, I go here a lot. Um, so the team has a full Ansible and a whole Terraform module on how to do things. Um, which is fantastic. Uh, but if you, uh, go to, I think F5 dev central, uh, GitHub, uh, you guys actually have a full, um, lab. Uh, no, this wasn't it. Sorry. There was called, uh, where was it? F5 sandbox. Um, this lab or this um, kind of introduction to automating F5 um, actually builds out the entire process, uh, the entire lab that I always use um, for if any kind of customers want me to show them F5 features. Um, I just quickly spin it off inside the AWS and it gives me Ansible host, uh, an F5 VE with 25 megs, two servers. Um, and for myself to learn how to do a lot of this stuff, I kind of just go back to all the cloud docs and all the labs that you guys have um, and follow a lot of the processes to learn um, because you do have a lot of information on here. It's just about accessing it, um, which I find uh, very useful. Uh, there's actually another one called uh, by Red Hat Light um, F5. I think that uh, GitHub. While you're looking that up, I'm going to read a, a question real quick from Mark. How do you get around some of the very diverse errors you can get from one box to another when you're using automation scripts? Um, if it's all smooth, I can see it working a treat, but many failures will surely halt it. So it typically, uh, the environments that I'm in, um, we usually have a staging box and a prod box. Um, I, I've been upgrading F5s for a while. Um, I could really tell right away if it's going to fail, to be honest. Um, but it's always good to run it in a staging environment. And uh, I think one of the users actually posted, Josh, uh, posted that mount issue there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we ran that in an exact environment that had an F5 uh, active active pair in AWS, and we found that issue. So we automatically added that to uh, all the devices for that customer itself. Um, and for that, we really just inside of the playbook. Um, where is this one? I think it's going to be here. Inside of the, this is just a verify playbook. We actually just added a task um, that's just big IP command. And this is just a TMSH command um, where we executed uh, that command to fix the problem. Um, so it, it, it is hard to do it. Um, but if you have a test environment, uh, or even an environment that you can spin up quickly um, using kind of Docker containers and in AWS, you can kind of test your stuff beforehand. Um, but this uh, Ansible F5 workshop here, um, I, I share this with all my clients because everybody always wants to know how to automate F5s, either adding pool members, um, deleting AS3s, um, creating apps using AS3. This is far about the best um, kind of free training, uh, Ansible, uh, workshop kind of, uh, I've seen, which how I learn or how, um, I've educated kind of myself through it. And we'll, we'll add, all, we'll add all those yeah. to the show notes afterwards yeah. for, for those watching. Beautiful. Thanks, Sebastian. Yeah. I, I have another works. question yeah. here while you're waiting for the, the install. I've tested some modules and read Ansible documentation, but, um, I need him to go into how to use iteration loops in Ansible modules also exploiting Excel or CSV. And if, you know, we- That, we that, that is a good question. It's probably way past my uh, <laughs> Ansible knowledge, to be honest. Um, I'm just I'm just getting into the, the point where I'm more just comfortable deploying my type of infrastructures uh, yeah. inside that environment. Um, but I'm sure I can uh, get back to you. And I know tons of Ansible people that answer my tough questions every three days I call them. So yeah. 
And and we certainly, um, M. Saeed, we can get the answers for mm -hmm. you. I, you know, I, I haven't messed with Ansible a whole lot, but I think they use Jinja templating, um, or you can at least use Jinja templating and iteration loops. If, if you go out and look at uh, Jinja's, um, uh, Jinja 2's documentation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, that's pretty helpful. So maybe not, you, you won't find exactly what you're looking for in Ansible documentation, but uh, but Jinja 2 documentation should be able to help you there as yeah. well. But if you have specific questions about that, uh, that, that you um, want to explore, if you get those to me uh, after the show, um, or you know, put them in the chat, we'll we'll hunt those down mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, or anyone else watching could chime in as well if you're if you're an Ansible ninja, you know. But yeah. that's uh, and that you know, I was going to say that too, uh, Sebastian. One thing I love about this whole solution is, I mean, obviously the power of the the automation. But as you said yourself, I mean, maybe you don't know every little bitty you know bit and piece about Ansible. But you don't have to to still create such a powerful solution. You know, you can take you can take the training or the information mm -hmm. that you showed us there on Dev Central or Cloud Docs, or whatever, and um, and then man, start rocking and rolling on this thing. It's uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Like when I, when I just put this out on Twitter, I had a couple of guys from F5 reach out to me. It's like, hey, you can try this way and do it better this way. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I even saw Ansible two days or three days ago released. Uh, a playbook to mitigate the, the vulnerability. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. They used uh, curl, they used that, um, uh, they, they kind of used raw. I'm like, oh wait, I can use this in my script to mm -hmm. execute this command. Cause yeah. nothing else was working for me. So it's the, the community itself is amazing. Yeah. Um, and everybody's um, always helpful. That's why I kind of just always release a lot of the stuff. I, I build code or Terraform or an Ansible. I'm just gonna, I just give it out because Someone always edits it to makes it better for me, and mm -hmm. you know you learn from them and you meet new people. Yeah, right. well, and that it's it's such a great point. I mean, it's you know the, that's the community coming together to help the community, yeah. yep. and so I right. I know that there are many people out there that may think you know hey I don't know enough about Ansible or you know AWS or whatever. I mean, pick pick mm -hmm. any of these technologies, right? And so maybe there's a there's a there's a fear or there's a hesitation to really put yourself out there or even to release anything, even if it's a little small thing. But, man, I would just encourage you follow Sebastian's lead, everybody, and uh, and do what he does. I mean, it's uh, number one, you're a rock star. Everyone, well, everyone you, yeah. now. Right. Um, but two, I mean, we we all we all have things to learn and we can all help mm -hmm. each other. So even that little that little raw curl thing. Uh, in yeah. fact, I know. I think uh, Eric Chin, uh, you, you put it up there a second ago. That's just another little great nugget, right? So you just kind of keep adding these to your to your toolbox, and so there's an alternate to using the curl stuff right there. So and if anybody need to follow, you follow Eric Chin on uh, his GitHub. He's got tons of great stuff I've stole from him. Yeah, so it, it, they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Eric Chin is a Eric Chin is uh, is the one that we all follow. That's yeah. Right. And it makes us all better. So yeah, it's awesome, man. So Dream Traveling says it would be a good idea to combine these info with Red Hat's Ansible knowledge. So you know, absolutely. To Sebastian's point a few minutes ago, you know, it's iterative and it's collaborative, right? You start with your own. You know, this is my. I'm going to solve my problem now. But then you can build on that over time, and then as you share it out, you know, you get that collaborative experience as well, and you can start folding things in from from different solutions, and it becomes a, a more mature product in the end. Yep. And, uh, you know, and I think uh, to Daniel's point, you know, that that's something else that, you know, comes down the line, possibly may, maybe mm -hmm. maybe in this first iteration, there's there's not post upgrade automated testing, uh, but maybe in the future that gets added. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, I know uh, we were just talking about Eric Chin. He said that he borrowed even that. Yeah. <laughs> little nugget. So, I mean, what, what a great what a great thing, though. I mean, you know, even a, even, you know, one of the one of the giants like Eric Chin that you know, that we look to and all that. He's mm -hmm. like, Hey, I, 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 even Eric Chen borrowed it from someone else who put it together. And so we just continue to help each other. So yeah, yeah I guess the point, the point of all that is don't be scared to just put something out there and, and let's all, let's all work on it together. So yep. yeah, so, yeah, Michael's point, Ginger, Ginger works. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Cool. 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 All right. So it looks like that thing finally uh, installed. That's it. it did. Right? Okay. It did install. Um, so everything got installed. It uh, verified the system, um, yeah. which is just to check that the install was correct. Uh, and then it actually spun out um, telling me, oh, yeah, look, uh, we have uh, the hard drive is fully installed into that partition. Nice. And the next step is to copy that config. 
And once this happens, the device just reboots. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. Sure. And, and the key thing for me as a consultant, um, helping many customers, is this is a sim. It's a simple playbook, um, mm -hmm. and it's easy to move to other customers. Um, right. So adding mm -hmm. verification and stuff like that. Yeah, we can add it for a customer, and we can make it very custom. Um, but for me to solve a problem, which I got a lot of emails this week saying, "Hey, can we schedule you tonight at ten to upgrade?" Upgrade. I'm like, okay, let's first upload the file so we can, you know, do this quickly. Yeah. Um, I'm like, here's a playbook. Here's uh, a curl script. Here's the TMSH commands. Okay, do do what you need to do um, to yeah. upload it so then we can safely uh, upgrade that tonight during a change window. Yeah. 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 What a great thing, man. So really quick, Sebastian, how many? How many? And maybe you don't have the exact number, but how many big IPs did you need to upgrade? Like, what was the what was kind of the level? Of, so uh, I think I have like six tonight. Uh, okay. I'm probably about, if I, I'm probably about like 46 right now, maybe okay. in this last week and a half. Yeah. yeah. So 46, I, I like, man. Yeah. So I, I can just imagine, you know, if Sebastian yeah. had to sit there and just like manually oh, yeah. type this thing out. Right. So, yeah. wow. It just shows the power of these automation tools. Well, yeah. The first actually started off was, um, I was at, at a customer that had 20, 28 of them. I'm like, all right, let me make SCP commands. So I can just copy the file. I'm like, I'm like oh, I don't want to make these. I'm making a loop. I'm like, wait a minute. Let's just get a playbook. I saw a command to upload. Okay, let's do that. All right, and then just go. Um, yeah. So it really started off with a simple SCP command, and then yeah. moved forward to this. So. And not uh, to mention the the uh, the accuracy of doing it in an automated way, because yeah. you know, again, if you're out there just typing it all in, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna miss something probably somewhere. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent especially when you get up to 46 of these things, or in some cases, people have more than that or whatever. Yeah. I think Brian McHenry, he was on one of the uh, live stream shows we did uh, recently. And he said, he he's like, if you have more than two or maybe even at two, then you need to start automating, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, Python has a, a book, you know, uh, or there's a, at least an author with Python. So automate the boring stuff. And yeah. it's, it's a really good exercise to go through because there's so much that, you do that that you do manually all the time and it's like you know it'd be really super awesome to get through some of that stuff so you can free yourself up to do more interesting things yep and uh rc 1719 um or 1795, 1795. You know, never considered ansible looks interesting and so uh, look into it absolutely thanks for joining yeah. us today old school man shell script way to go rfc yeah. <laughs> and so daniel 46 upgrade so so i guess my question to you uh uh, Sebastian is like day one. You said 100% success was day two. Also, I'm still at a pretty 100% success. Nice. Um, Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, originally, when I uh, been, well before like version 14, not even 12. Um, 12 always had some hiccups sometimes. I thought with upgrades, um, but uh, the iHealth used to have that upgrade process that kind of defined uh, the help uh, or helped you upgrade it or told you if there was any, any errors. Um, but uh, most of the customers that I'm upgrading, I, I've either built their F5s or managed their F5s or uh, advised them on how to deploy apps. So I'm very, fairly confident they're done well. Yeah, so, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, Sebastian, this has been awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, no you know, we're going to transition over to uh, our next segment of the show. And we're going to look into um, some big IQ awesomeness that uh, does a very similar thing to what we just saw with Ansible. Yeah, so a lot of options. Perfect. So that, Jim, lot, hey, really quick before you go, I just got to mention this um, little fun story. Sebastian, I heard that uh, maybe you got some days mixed up and you joined uh, yesterday. I did join yesterday. Life. So I like to think that rather than uh, rather than you joining us today, we have yeah. now caught up to where, uh -huh. you know, yeah. you've been on this thing for <laughs> like 24 you. hours. And <laughs> yeah. We have finally showed up for you. So, man, that's right. Thanks again for being here. It's just uh, awesome to see, you know, the uh, the power of this automation and, and what you were able to do. So thanks for sharing this with the community and making all of us uh, better at what we do. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Absolutely. All right. All right, Kyle. Welcome hey to the guys. show, man. For from, from one from one rock star to another, from a customer rock star to the to the F five expert, Kyle Oliver, man. So, right, uh, so, Kyle, thanks for being here, man. Really appreciate it. Happy to contribute. Thanks yeah, for having yeah. me. 
So for you know, for some of the audience that that maybe doesn't know where Big IQ has come in the last few years, can you just give a high level overview of of, of Big IQ? And because like from my earliest experiences, Big IQ was you know, uh, oh, it's a device manager. And so maybe for people who haven't even looked at Big IQ for many years, a couple of hot minutes, yeah, right? a couple <laughs> of hot minutes. You know, what what is Big IQ and and what is it what does it do? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Um, feel free to give me the hook when I go on too long because uh, I've been known to do uh, n- ninety yeah, minutes or so on what is Big talk. IQ. Yeah. So, I need to check uh, hook sound. We, we need to add some sound effects <laughs> yep. in here. Yeah. Hook so, stage left or whatever. Yep. Uh, to your point, uh, Big IQ has evolved quite a bit from uh, from really a device manager, and uh, most recently, where we've put a lot of our emphasis is around uh, application centric management and application-centric visibility, uh, allowing you to connect up your application services, see your application services here, and uh, troubleshoot them uh, live here in, in Big IQ. You know, you can get responses back or get some information back to say, hey, this application is potentially under attack. Uh, you know, get some information about what's going on uh, between the clients and the Big IP, between the Big IP and the backend servers. Uh, and get a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, graphs and information down here as to what's going on in your environment to help you. Uh, you know, our, our goal is to reduce the mean time to not F5. So when when the call comes in and and somebody's uh, irate that their application's down, um, you know, we want our uh, application owners to be able to go in here and, and take a look at this information themselves, and uh, also our NetOps and SecOps teams to be able to go in and uh, you know, help diagnose problems and, and see things that are going on here. Uh, in addition to the application-centric visibility, uh, we continue to have management of uh, almost all of the F5 modules, uh, LTM, DNS, uh, you know, all the security modules, APM, ASM, um, SSL orchestrator, and then, uh, you know, monitoring for each of those pieces uh, as well, and, and alerting for your environment, uh, an integration with iHealth that's up here. So uh, the ability for Big IQ to take uh, QK views from your Big IPs, upload them into iHealth, get your reports back here into the uh, into the Big IQ, and not only show you a a device by device view, but also show you uh, an overall view in your entire environment to say for this particular heuristic this uh, number of devices in your environment have, have triggered this heuristic. You can get more information from a solution, um, more information by drilling down on the heuristic. Uh, on top of that, we also have uh, event reporting for, for most of the security modules as well. So you can see the information about uh, you know, what's going on for your, your ASM uh, environment, for example. Uh, and, and many different dashboards have evolved over the years to give you more and more information about uh, what's going on in your environment. I think I saw something too about the uh, Let's Encrypt uh, certificate integration as well in 7.1, which you know excites me. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last two releases, we've started to build uh, integration with some third-party CAs. So most recently in 7.1, we built an integration with Let's Encrypt, uh, and prior to that, we built an integration with Venify. Uh, so you can leverage, in addition to Big IQ be a, being able to create certs for you, or you being able to upload certs into Big IQ, you can now leverage Let's Encrypt or Venify to be able to uh, get your get and maintain your certificates. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that easy button. So oh man, that's cool. All I right, think well, that's that's kind of what this that's kind of what this show's about. It's just right. man, how so did we hit button. how did we hit the easy? Button? How did we not go to Staples and get an easy button? For I know, this show? man. I wish uh, I thought about that. But Who's the I'm, producer? Yeah, exactly. Dang it. Where's the staples? That's right. Um, good stuff. Yeah. Big IQ, man. What a powerful technology. Just, I mean, it lets you see it all, you know, it's like yep. that, that huge view. So that's, that's amazing. All right. Well, you want to get into, uh, get into this demo? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I also want to point out that the, uh, the things that I'm going to show today, and, and I also created a couple of YouTube videos and, uh, and put them up there. Uh, I'm not going to run the end-to-end demo today. I'm not going to put you through a, a second uh, Big IP upgrade uh, <laughs> live here, but uh, you can watch the condensed demo. Uh, I took the the upgrade and, and cut out all of the waiting parts and, and uh, just put them in the 
just put the, the meaty parts into the demo, but I'll, I'll walk you through uh, what Big IQ can do in these areas. Uh, quickly want to point out that neither one of these functionalities are new in Big IQ. So if you happen to be running an older version of Big IQ, uh, I still want you to be running the latest version. I think you'll get the most out of the latest version, but uh, both the script management and the software management are available in uh, 6.x for, for Big IQ as well. Okay, cool. So uh, it'll work. Yeah, so starting with the script management, Big IQ has the ability to take uh, your TMSH or Bash script that you've uh, you've authored, uh, and I've gotten one here that I borrowed to borrow Eric Chen's term uh, from Carl Burnett, one of our F5 consultants who was uh, working on mitigating this, this uh, vulnerability out at a number of customers. Uh, he had created a Bash script. I took this Bash script and. Uh, this is the one that I used in the demo. So basically, you just give your script a name here, paste the information into uh, this window, save it, and uh, then you can click this Run button and go out and uh, give your task a name and uh, choose a device timeout and then choose one or more devices that you want to run the script on. You could run it on all of them. You could run it on... Uh, a subset of them. Mm -hmm. So basically just, uh, you know, slide them over here. And then uh, if I click run, it's all gonna go on in the background. So if I wanna do other things uh, within Big IQ, I can do that. Um, or I can go over to the script log and, uh, you know, start to see some of that, uh, that information of what's going on. It's giving me some information about what's happening. You know, I can drill down here and start to see uh, more information. If I needed to cancel the script, I can cancel out of the script. Um, like I said, I can go go off and do other things. I could I could pull in the next uh, script that I that I wanted to run, and uh, you know continue on that way. And then uh, it'll only take a minute or so for this script to run. And once it once it finishes up, uh, I should get the uh, the exit code here and the output file. Then I can review that output file right here in Big IQ, or if I wanted to download the output file uh, once it's created, I can select it here, uh, and it will download as a as a script or as a text file that I can use. All right, so now it's uh, it's completed, and like I said, I can view the output file here, and uh, you know I know that Carl's updated the script a little bit in in the meantime to make it a little bit less chatty, but this is the one that I used. Uh, in the video. So basically it gives me the host name, gives me the output of the commands that were run and gives me, uh, uh, you know, information that a 404 was now passed uh, at the end. So I know that this box is, uh, is patched. Uh, and that's kind of the, the answer for the, the script. And like I said, uh, it can be TMSH or bash. You can just load those, whatever script you want in there and uh, send it off and running. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, what a powerful thing. Just to run the script from Big IQ on all those selected big IPs all at the That's same right. time. Yeah, super powerful, super powerful. Yep. So, so yeah. um, on to the second part of, of what I did a video of, which was uh, similar to what uh, Sebastian did with, with Ansible, um, is the ability for Big IQ to take a software image and push it out to your big IPs and uh, get them upgraded. So uh, I sort of pre-staged this one in, a, in the cooking show style, yeah. uh, but basically you can, uh, you can choose whatever software image you wanna put out on the big IP. Uh, mm -hmm. And this could be any form of ISO that you can get from F5. So uh, an engineering hotfix, even a, a regular hotfix, a, a full release, a maintenance release, any of those things, you basically load the ISO into big IQ, Big IQ, uh, you know, validates that the ISO is uh, is complete and happy, and then uh, you can use Big IQ to to push the uh, or or upgrade the software on those Big IPs. So um, once I've given my my task here a name again, now I've got a bunch of choices as to what do I want to do as part of this software upgrade. Um, so somebody had asked in Sebastian's session about uh, some post installation assessment. Uh, and that is one thing that we have built into uh, the Big IQ upgrade, uh, a pre and post installation assessment. So essentially, uh, before Big IQ does the upgrade, 
it kind of takes a snapshot or an inventory of the configuration. Uh, and you can see in the video, you can choose which parts of the configuration you really care about. Um, but basically things like uh, the number of virtual servers that are there and their status, um, you can take that snapshot before and their snapshot after. And if there's a difference, you can easily walk through what those differences are. You can go remediate that difference. Like in my case in the video, I ran the post assessment a little bit too early and the big IP that I upgraded wasn't fully booted yet. So I just waited uh, a few, uh, another minute or so for the, the big IP to get fully upgraded, ran the post assessment again and saw that everything was clean compared to the, um, what was taken yeah. at the, the pre-assessment. So that's an option, I recommend it, but uh, you certainly don't have to do it. Um, Another option here is around, do you want to perform backup? Um, when we were talking to a number of customers about what do they do as part of their software upgrades, they said, you know, as part of my process or part of my runbook, or, you know, people have different uh, terms for it. They said, I take a backup before, or I take a backup after, or I take a backup before and I take a backup after. <laughs> um, so since Big IQ can take backups, you know, that's one of the functions that we've had uh, for a very long time, we said, well, we can just add that as an option into the uh, into the upgrade step. And then you've once you select this perform a backup, you get the option of do you want to do it before? Do you want to do it after? And then the typical UCS backup options of do you want to include the private keys um, and do you want to encrypt the backup files? Yeah. Um, this pause for the software image to the pause after the software image has been copied to the devices. Uh, it's grayed out if you've chosen either one of these options at the top. Um, but if you really just want to blast this uh, uh, software out there and get it upgraded and skip the pre-installation and skip the, uh, the backup, you can certainly choose to not pause. So uh, what would happen in that case is as soon as that software uh, got uploaded to the big IP, it's going to start installing it into whatever target volume you selected uh, down here below. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then the, the next option is around pause for reboot confirmation. So if you're really in, and probably I would suggest most people would only use this in a lab type scenario. If you really just want to blast that software out there and get it upgraded, you can uncheck the pause for reboot confirmation. And really it's just going to go through that entire process. And, um, you know, once the software is installed, copy over the configuration and reboot that software into the, uh, or reboot that big IP into the uh, you know version that you've chosen. Now, uh, without this next option checked, Big IQ is going to do uh, basically parallel installation for the devices that are uh, below. If you select this install devices one by one, it was really designed to upgrade uh, DNS sync groups or GTM sync groups, so it, it walks through that process. That's uh, you know, best practice from F5 as to how do you upgrade your sync group uh, and keep your, your DNS services online. Um, but it, you can use it for uh, a regular install as well. So um, similar to what I had for the script option, if I add or remove devices here, I get my entire list of big IPs that are known to big IQ. And uh, I can select, you know, one or more of them here. I can also select by a group that I've created or a cluster that I've created. Uh, and then I've got the ability to set a default volume here, or you can have Big IQ just say, choose the next available volume. So maybe not all of your uh, Big IPs are currently running on 1.1. Uh, some one might be running on 1.2. You can tell it to cho choose the next available volume, or you can specify a volume name here to say, install all of them in HD 1.2. Or uh, alternatively, you can specify here after you've chosen the devices that uh, this is the uh, install place you want to uh, you want to drop it into. Uh, and I will say, if, it, if you do choose uh, one by one here, you do have the ability to choose what order they, uh, they upgrade in. So you can you can drag and drop the list here to um, you know, change which devices are going to get upgraded first, if that's something that uh, matters to you.
Super cool. Yeah. A lot of power there. So many different options. And it's, uh, yeah, it's good to know all those things. Hey, Kyle, we had a question on, uh, it, you know, is there, is that script, that mitigation script uh, downloadable? We have a link for that. Is that in one of your videos? Um, I'll have to check with Carl uh, to see if he's posted it somewhere. Uh, okay. But uh, we can certainly see if he's if he's willing or if he's already got it out on on GitHub somewhere. Okay. Cool. 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 And so we'll get back with you, Josh. On hey, that. so quick question, Kyle. I know we asked this of Sebastian as well. If you're if you start going through the the you know upgrade or the patching and all that, and then things start to go sideways, things get a little crazy. What are what are some things you could do, or what are some ways that you can know that that's happening and kind of back out and all that? Um, so you're certainly going to get the uh, you know you're going to get some feedback here once the installation is running. So if any of those uh, kind of errors are encountered as part of the install, they're going to get bubbled up into this uh, into the installation task. Um, let me see if I have a uh, a finished task here. Uh, yeah, so this one just says installation completed, but if there was any sort of uh, failure, you'd get the, the okay. status message here and right there. Uh, you okay. know, tip, typical remediation process, probably go to the big IP itself, uh, see what state it's in and uh, you know, bring it back, bring it back to happy. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, super cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So yeah, so if you had 46 big IPs like Sebastian was talking about, you could do that here on Big IQ as well, right? You just select all the different ones you need and go, right? Just what you yep. just outlined. Absolutely. Uh, and one thing that I did want to point out um, is uh, really to do any of this, any of this information or any of these services on the device tab, you only have to establish that initial trust with a Big IP. Um, you don't have to import any of the configuration, you know, so so if you're not ready to import your LTM configuration or security configuration into Big IQ, all you have to do is establish management uh, or establish trust with the device. So, you know, IP address, username and password port here and, uh, you know, bring that uh, Big IP in. And, you know, once you've got that trust established, you can do uh, any of the things that are listed here uh, on the device tab. Okay, so connectivity, but not you know like ownership. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. No kidding. Wow, man. Wow. All right. Well, you know, I think that's uh, you know, unless anybody else have any questions that you guys wanted to address, I think we're we're pretty well wrapped up. So yeah, well, Kyle, thanks so much, man, for uh, right. big IQ uh, lessons and uh, and and obviously to Sebastian as well. I mean the 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 whole point here is this automation and it's not really even just about making it easier on yourself. It's about the necessity of it. I mean, you're in, in today's day and age with all the parts and pieces moving around, whatever, I think automation is, is not just nice, but it's necessary. So, yeah. uh, so yeah, certainly so, in, in big environments where, yeah. where you have way more than you could possibly patch, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's a definitely a necessity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so really cool, man. Well, Kyle, thank you for joining us and right. um, you know, thank hopefully you for we can have you on in the future. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, Kyle. Awesome, man. Well, I tell you what, uh, I know RFC 1795. I saw a comment that he had a second ago that he, uh, he had to get out of here. It's nine o'clock where he was. And that's been, man, that's been 20 minutes ago. So RFC 1795. Thanks for hanging in there with us and tell your wife, tell your wife, thank you for letting us borrow you for a while on Dev Central Connects. Uh, and also maybe remind her that, you know, the next time she goes to her favorite website that she's likely, you know, traversing through a big IP somewhere. So you're just trying to make her life better That's right. by joining us on Death Central And maybe, Connection. maybe you need some DC shirts so that, uh, you know, she can see even more of, yeah. of, of F5 in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell her to tell her to join us. She could start typing in stuff like, Hey guys, what, is, what are you doing here? Good to go. Well, that's awesome, man. Hey, I was, uh, oh yeah, we got one from Marcus here. Any of the automation avenues been able to capture the S flow bug on VEs that stop traffic egressing TMM on interfaces from been able to capture the S flow bug. Um, mm. Hey mm. Kyle, do you know anything about that? I'll, I'll just bring you back <laughs> Suddenly in. Suddenly Kyle is back. I'm not Wham. sure exactly uh, what Marcus is asking there. Yeah, I'm not, what I'm do you not mean sure by capture? Marcus, can you clarify that a little bit? Okay. Yeah, we have to wait on Marcus. So, yeah, uh, we, we got some good there. feedback. Remain great demos. 
Always wash your hands, Romaine. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, we need to we need to be sanitized, social distance, you know, all that, right? Yeah, good stuff. Josh, he still right. got his Ovaltine shirts. Yeah, <laughs> drink. Oh, the the coded the JavaScript the uh, obfuscation uh, code. Yeah. That that one's a good one. I love it. I love it. So well, good stuff. Yeah, good if we stuff. don't hear. Uh, hey, Marcus, hit us up offline. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Uh, Marcus, right. hit us up offline, um, and uh, and we'll we'll get back with you on that just to make sure that we understand what you're asking and yeah, um, yeah. or drop a drop a question in dev central uh, q a you know yeah. so that's uh, that's good stuff as well always yeah. use that let the community yeah. which you know that that was one thing i was just going to kind of say as we wrap up this show is a call out to the community to our customers and that is um you know we invite you to share kind of like what we've already sort of talked about here today but we invite you to share your ideas and you know your innovation and things like what Sebastian's done, what Kyle shared with us today. Um, you know, I've, I know that, that little bits of, of magic, you know, little pockets of magic happen all the time around Dev Central, and uh, and you know, and we we want to hear about that. We want to know about that. So um, you know, we all become better for it. So if yep. there's a little idea you've been hanging on to, or like ah, here's a little script I wrote, but I'm not sure if I should share it or not, man. Just encourage you to share it and. We'll uh, we'll come around you. We'll support you, and we'll uh, we'll show it off, you know. And and uh, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. To that point, uh, not just Sebastian, but we had a uh, user twpsyn underscore on Dev Central uh, added an upgrade big IP using Ansible uh, to the code share as well. So uh, I, I haven't looked at the the solution whether you know how similar it is uh, to Sebastian's, but there's there's another one out there as well. And then also, uh, you know, Sebastian mentioned it, but out on uh, Ansible's blog, the um, they have the uh, automating the mitigation of FI Big IP TMUI, uh, the uh, CVE 2020-5902. Uh, so if you aren't able to do updates, whether you're out of uh, support or your device can't upgrade to the latest versions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can still automate the mitigation itself. Yeah. And uh, um, Ansible's uh, blog has a... Um, uh, covers that. So That's awesome. There's lots of community out there uh, wrapping around uh, this issue, mm -hmm. and uh, not just this issue because you know we have code share uh, for many years on Dev Central and people just sharing what they know and, and uh, you know it's yeah. what's awesome about community. Yeah, I mean, and and yeah, it's, it's just to that point. I'm glad you said that. It's not just about in in a time of crisis where it's like, hey, there's a vulnerability, we need to kind of do something quickly, but just in everyday life, you know, Hey, here's a cool solution that I've came up with or a cool thing that I developed. So it's, it's, uh, it's more than just in a moment of, you know, of struggle. So, yeah. Great. So yes, Sabrun, all the links, uh, we will collect those both from Kyle and from Sebastian and, uh, and, and we'll get those in show notes here on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, housekeeping two weeks from today, we two will have, today. Dev Central connects as again, and next week I will host uh, another, I guess, the second episode of You Want Answers, uh, where we'll cover maybe a, a, a question or two that's been retired from uh, certification tests, as well as dig into a post or two from uh, Q and A on Dev Central, and just kind of getting behind the intent of of the question, and maybe uh, expanding out a little bit from the uh, the myopic view to look at uh, you know the bigger issues around that. So. So Jason, quick question is you want answers. Is that a statement that you're telling us that we want answers? Or are you asking us if we want answers? Uh, yes, <laughs> both of those things. Cause I was going to, if it was a question, I was going to say the, the answer to your question <laughs> is a hearty. Yes, I do want answers <laughs> and I want the truth. You yes. know? So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I stuff, can't, man. I can't make the, uh, the the growly face that that he makes in in that scene. But, yeah, yeah. You know. Tom Cruise and a few good men. Yeah, you know, Lieutenant. What what was his name? Lieutenant right? Caffey. Lieutenant Caffey. Yes, that's right. Colonel that's right. Nathan. Colonel, Jessup. Colonel Nathan Jessup. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, what a great movie. Fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, yeah. So get and out I, there. And I suspect next week's you want answers will be even better than that. You know. So, I hope so. Jack so, Nicholson's got nothing on Mr. Jason Rom right here. Yeah. I'm not so sure about that, but, <laughs> but I'll take it. Yeah, so, I'll do it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you out there in the community. Have a great day.